welcome to the trick of the trade series so i am janvi our host and uh, i welcome you to the podcast series and would like to thank you for taking out time and we are thrilled to have you as a guest on uh, trick of the trade series so we uh, guys we have a, a very special guest with us abhishek talking about abhishek abhishek is a sales and business development expert with a passion for the marvel cinematic universe and he works at netcore and ai powered martech platform that helps brands engaging in personalized customer experience across multiple channels abhishek thank you for joining in and uh, how are you doing today doing absolutely fantastic what about you thanks for the nice intro there uh that's great i'm also doing great so let me tell you about curate talking about curate curate is an eyes my venture and we are india's first revenue tech firm and enabling leading startups and corporations to maximize their revenue by building the best revenue teams and in this series we invite industry experts to share their practical ta- uh, tips insights and secrets of success uh it could, would be for our audience who can be an employee student or a lifelong learner who would actually find something valuable and interesting in this episode so uh, let us start knowing more about you about your journey uh, so far so where do i start so i am uh, a folk from west bengal so i am a bong and uh, i have started my education i, I mean i have completed my education uh, you know uh, in 2016 I am a engineer mechanical engineer not by choice by the way and uh, so after that I have started uh, working into the IT sector which was basically a web design company so I started from there 2017 and then uh, you know I have been doing the sales and business development uh, for most organizations I have been with and uh, you know at this point in time I am with Netcore Cloud it's been like 4 or 5 years since I have been uh, into this field i have managed teams i have uh, been into individual contributor roles like now and uh, you know also been uh, a trainer for a uh, for some time in my previous organizations so that's who i am uh, yeah that's great so what does a day look like in your role yeah so the day looks uh, pretty busy it actually has a lot of work basically because uh, sdring is something where uh, you know you go ahead and research a lot of prospects you have a long list of your tal which is the target account list and uh, researching them finding the right persona uh, going ahead and contacting them in uh, you know god knows how many creative ways because there is a lot of crowd in the market so trying to cut through the clutter and once that's done uh, we try to get some response from linkedin from calls from emails uh, different channels like that and uh, yeah that's how it is so i would love some detailed questions so that i can kind of you know uh, kind of peel some more layers for you so yeah so as i mentioned that you uh, you have been an engineer and pursued btech right so what pursued you to me uh, uh, start a career in two sales domain um nobody uh, actually ends up in sales because they want to <laughs> it is kind of accidental so it was with me same as well so but yeah love it so far because it's pretty challenging it helps you grow it helps you you know uh, build immense confidence because you're talking with strangers day in day out so that is kind of uh, keeping you ahead of 90% of the other people right uh, not comparing but of course that's kind of a very uh, expensive skill in this market i would say because you know uh, no matter how many how much ai or something comes in but a uh, human interaction would be a human interaction and uh, empathy would never be able to matched by an ai so i think uh, this is what i have learned and uh, again i said this is accidental but loving the journey so far that's great so how do you measure the effectiveness of your demand generation efforts and what metrics do you use to evaluate your success yeah so uh, generally measuring every step is pretty hard so we have some automation tools that we use something like an outreach so whenever we are making an outreach to a customer we have a you know a, a back uh, a dashboard 
where we are able to f measure all our efforts. So let's say how many calls we have made, how many emails we have sent, how many LinkedIn messages we have sent, all of that, right? So that's how we measure our efforts. And uh, can you repeat the next question, like the second part of the question? And uh, basically, what metrics do you use to evaluate your success? Yeah, so targets, of course, right? So once we, uh, you know, achieving, we are achieving our targets uh, month by month, quarter by quarter. That is something how we measure measure our success. Apart from that, there are definitely other things like how much creativity we are showing in our job. Uh, what is the unique, uh, you know, personality that we are presenting in front of the customer, which you know they haven't, they have kind of never heard about. So like pattern disrupting techniques is something which is appreciated in our field, and uh, that's how we kind of measure our success there. All right, that great. So, uh, what roles uh, does technology play in modern sales and demand orientation? And what tools do you uh, use to maximize your results? Yeah, so as I said, so outreach is one of them. Uh, so, this is a you know a sales engagement tool so whenever i need to make any kind of calls emails we use that tool because that helps us keep, keep a track of things uh, next we use linkedin sales navigator that helps us uh, you know bringing out a lot of useful data about the persona or the client we are targeting uh, we use zoom info uh, to get again the phone numbers the emails and uh, all the useful step which come in handy while uh, while we are contacting them we use lucia which is similar to zoom info but it is kind of an extension so this is kind of a tech stack that we have uh, at this point in time that is outreach linkedin sales navigator zoom info and uh, again some few extensions here and there all right so how do you manage and prioritize your sales pipeline to ensure that you are focusing on the most high potential prospects and closing the deals effectively Correct. So this is a, there's a research and uh, market research team that we have, right? So they help us kind of prioritizing our account. So there is a certain tag uh, allocated to every account. So let's say P1 to P10, which is priority one to priority 10. Uh, so this kind of, uh, this is something which is, you know, prioritizing our account list. So P1 is very important. P2 is important, something like that. So grading uh, the account from a P tag. So this is this helps us kind of keep a uh, uh, you know uh, a track of the you know accounts and managing it properly and based on that we reach out to the accounts uh, because every p tag account has different features or different uh, you know uh, remarks written in them which means that uh, this should take uh, we should take kind of special care while reaching a p tag p tag 1 versus the p tag 2 so there are certain differences between them so this is how our research team helps us to manage the data list, the account list. Absolutely. And what are the key elements of an effective goal outreach measures? And how can one ensure that a message uh, stand out in a crowded inbox? Yeah, so that's the hardest job. So uh, to stand out, we have to definitely go ahead and make sure that we are reading a lot. So as an SDR, I read a lot. I watch a lot of videos of sales influence, influencers uh, on LinkedIn, and I consume a lot of content that they share because whatever is working for them, they kind of share the, uh, those contents on LinkedIn. One of them is Josh Brown. I would highly suggest someone who is watching this to go ahead and check him out because you'll get a lot of pattern disrupting techniques uh, from him on calls and on in emails as well. So to stand out in the crowd, we have to be special something highly personalized uh, so that you know the person resonates that hey this is not a generic email or generic email or a generic call so we can open up with uh, so the for one example i'd like to give you if i if i'm allowed to take some time here so in the calling uh, you know game there is very generic openers so we are pretty used to it right you pro probably get cold calls a lot so if you hear them you are like all right this is a cold call i'm hanging up Correct. So if we go ahead and tell the prospect upfront, okay, hey, uh, David, this is Abhishek with Netcore Cloud. I'll be super honest here. This is actually a cold call. Do you want to hang up now or maybe give me like 30 seconds and then decide? 
this is different, right? They have never heard it. So this is how we disrupt the pattern and cut through the clutter, stand out in the market. I think I lost your voice. Let me check. Uh, I'm not audible now. Yeah, now I, you are. Uh, I mentioned that it was a very great way to actually stand out and uh, reach out to the prospective clients. And it also helped us to know the interest of the person. And it's really important to stand out in the crowd and uh, present your uh, product. So absolutely. how do you research? Yeah. So sorry, you were saying something? No, I said absolutely. You're totally on point here. Yeah. So how do you research your target audience to ensure that the message is relevant and tailored to their specific needs and interest? So, uh, again, research market research team comes in very handy here. So they help us uh, find the right persona and uh, uh, help us kind of frame the right messaging. Uh, of course, they give us a skeleton and then we use our creativity to make it more engaging. So market research team is heavily helpful here to uh, make us understand that, uh, you know, what is the target market, uh, which people we should target and, uh, you know, give us the contact details, uh, not contact details, but the account information and the contact, like who would be the right person. And then we need to find the numbers and all that stuff. So research team comes in very handy to uh, handle that. Absolutely. So uh, what are the key components of a successful prospecting strategy and how do you identify the right prospects to target for your product or service? What are the correct components of the of a successful strategy? So the strategy is very important here. So what we really focus on is not the result, but in the efforts, so in the activity. So basically, uh, if you are doing a certain activity for a certain period of time you're bound to get results right so if there is a, a metric that you need to reach by the end of the day let's say if you start your day and you must make 100 120 cold calls uh you know send 10 hyper personalized email 10 20 in mails uh this is the activity and if you do this over time there is no way that you are not hitting your target or you're not getting your uh, you know, uh, uh, results. So the activity is uh, more important. That's where we strategize uh, because results is ultimately not in your hand, right? The person uh, in front of you who is kind of seeing those messages, they have the choice to make if they want to respond or not. But the increasing the probability or this, uh, you know, propensity of them replying is the volume that we send them. So that's how we strategize it. All right. So how do you uh, research your target audience to ensure that your message is relevant and tailored to their specific needs and interest? Yeah, so once we have the, uh, you know, ac uh, accounts and the persona with us, we try to go ahead and kind of stalk them over social media, LinkedIn, and see their bio, see what they have been doing previously in the organization and uh, you know uh, look at their linkedin posts so a lot of knowledge we can kind of gather from there because we can understand that what exactly their interest is most prospect kind of do not uh, you know post on linkedin or are not active so we kind of check what are they liking what uh, in which posts they are commenting on which makes us understand that okay this is something is uh, that is interesting to this person based on that we kind of frame our messages to hyper personalize the experience for them and not sound generic. That's a really great point to uh, research about the person's like or uh, the part where they're interested and actually provides an upper edge on the uh, person who would be uh, selling their product or service to them. Just spot on, correct. So how do you conduct your market research to understand that, as you already mentioned? And apart from that, what are some effective techniques for gathering this information? Uh, gathering this information, I think I kind of answered that in my previous answer only. So kind of uh, stalk them, research their uh, interests and all that stuff. And then we gather the information to tailor our messaging. Absolutely. And uh, what are some common mistakes that companies make when prospecting and how can these be avoided? I think 
very generic messages can be avoided and very long marketing style or you know like website content style emails can be avoided today because in this age and day no one has time uh, even if they have time they want to make sure that they are investing it in something important which is adding value to their life uh, and uh, us customers are definitely very choosy about what they pick right because north american markets are the hardest markets that's what is kind of told in this industry so to make sure that uh, you know to avoid uh, what to avoid is sending marketing in, in uh, emails with long text break off kind of text uh, instead we can send visual emails which is like two short lines to make sure that the customer is understanding and there is one gif or one video or one meme in there so that the person can connect because uh, you know at today, in today's time it is things are more visual than just written so people do not have time one thing and second is uh, do not please do not kind of uh, call out of the blue without having an agenda back in in the back of the mind without planning because that kind of you know uh, you'll fall flat on your faces if you do that so it's very important to make sure that whatever you want to speak kind of practices before listen to your own recordings see where you are stuttering and where you are making mistakes and once that's done and once you feel that all right now i can go ahead and pitch this uh, without any stutter or you know something like that along those lines go ahead and pitch that so short emails uh, short crisp uh, very honest call openers uh, should be done instead of long boring uh, you know traditional kind of messaging over the phone and calls and emails absolutely so how do you manage and prioritize your sales pipeline to ensure that you're focusing on the most high potential uh, prospects and obviously closing the deals efficiently yeah so closing the deals uh, is not in my uh, job role it is uh, with the account executives which is which 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 we work with whom we work with very closely so we set the meetings and they kind of execute them we are in them of course but uh they are the people who close who bring in the money but we bring in the prospect so so this is how uh it is done and uh i again kind of lost the first part of the question i'm so sorry can you just repeat the first part please sure, sure. so how do you manage and prioritize your sales pipeline to uh, basically focus on the high potential prospects correct so high potential prospect as i mentioned there are certain tags to certain accounts so those accounts are basically higher value because if we kind of bring them in the meeting the chances of them converting into an sql which is a sales qualified lead uh, with a higher ticket is more so if it is a p1 or p2 or p3 tag the chances that the money that we will be making from those accounts are uh, you know bigger tickets like higher ticket accounts if these are lower tags these are kind of mid market or startups so in the mid market and startups you know typically the money would not be as big so that is how we prioritize our tag so these are enterprise account there are mid market account there are startups so based on these account tags uh, we make sure or we kind of understand like okay this is how much money is going to come with this account if we are able to close them something like that how do you analyze and synthesize market research data to adul uh, insights uh, that inform your prospecting and marketing strategies yeah so there are certain campaigns that always going on so let's say ki our that our marketing team research marketing research team is always pushing in a lot of content in the inboxes of these uh, customers which are in our tal or the prospects which are in our tal so based on the engagement that we receive on these campaigns we understand that which account is more interested or which account is more likely to listen to what we have to say or maybe more likely to change the current vendor which is of course our competitor in the next 3 to 6 to 9 months based on that insight we go ahead and approach and be as aggressive as possible uh, on these particular set of accounts so this is how we kind of Uh, manage the market research data and generate insights and all that stuff 
Absolutely. So how do you segment your target audience uh, based on factors like demographics, behavior, and are there any benefits of categorizing the uh, audience on that basis? Yeah, so basically we are mostly uh, targeting the North American market right now. And uh, in that space, most of the companies are, uh, you know, segmented based on the potential they are spending potential they have so this is what uh, how but because the demographic doesn't really matter in if uh, you know if the spending potential is high so basically if the employee count is high if they have raised a lot of funds in the last couple of months or maybe last uh, year or something like that then we understand that okay this is how much spending potential they have because if let's say i uh, my uh, prospect right now has a, a, a you know a, uh, Kia Sonnet, let's say, a car, right? And if I am selling a Creta, so I know, uh, so it is probably a similar in the similar range, right? So if they can afford a Kia Sonnet, they can kind of push their budget and afford in Creta as well. So why don't just go ahead and, you know, call them and understand if they are ready to kind of check another car. I'm just giving an example. So check another car and drive it out and let's see how it is kind of, how it feels. If it is better, two things can happen so one you can understand okay, okay this is much better than what i have or the other is basically you can understand i have the best product in my in the market right now i don't need anything else these are the two outcomes so that's it all right and how do you use your buyer's persona to guide uh, your prospecting and marketing efforts and what are the best practices for developing these sort of effective personas So I think uh, kind of answered this question before. So uh, uh, developing the personas, uh, I think I did kind of answer that question. I'm not making it, this question is not kind of making sense to me. So uh, if you if you would like to kind of elaborate on that, uh, it will help. It will be helpful. All right, sure. Uh, so there are uh, many type of buyers and. Uh, they have different personas, different set of buyers. So how do you identify the different sets of buyers and how it uh, fit, uh, how categorizing actually helps you to uh, plan out the strategies? OK, so uh, I think this is about the decision maker. So basically, if there are three type of buyers, so let's say if there is an account and I have like four or five uh, contacts in them, and all are kind of decision makers, but there are segments that they are divided in. So one is the key decision maker. Second is the influencer. One, third is the influencer. Two. So based on that, we categorize these contacts, and based on that, we contact them. So first of all, our main focus is trying to get to the decision maker. Sorry, get to the decision maker. If not possible, then we go ahead and for the first influencer, second influencer, third influencer. Based on that, we try to bridge, uh, you know, some channels to the right buying persona. That's how we categorize them and kind of target them. All right, that's great. Uh, uh, identifying and categorizing decision makers actually help to figure out a lot of things and plan on the strategies. Correct. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Abhishek, for taking out time and be part of this wonderful session and sharing some uh, wonderful insights with our audience. And I uh, really enjoyed having a conversation and knowing more about your experience and uh, your insights. Awesome. I was probably not too smart enough to answer a few uh, very hard questions that you just bombarded with me, uh, me with. <laughs> just kidding, by the way. So, yeah, really enjoyed this uh, conversation and, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. That's great. And we are actually uh, grateful to have you as a guest on the Trick of the Trade series. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you have so much. Day. You too. Have a great Bye-bye. Bye-bye.